Jeez, it's a mess up in here. No matter. Take care of business. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Giga Hall Part 16. Thanks, y'all, for tuning in. And yeah, as you saw there, the Docket Studio is in a bit of an upheaval right now because, well, everything you see in these Giga Halls, it's got to go somewhere, right? So I accumulate and I accrue and I accumulate all the stuff over on the side here and eventually it's got to be sorted into their proper bins and often those bins are behind a lot of other bins so everything's got to come out of storage and get sorted of course whether it be color changers planes or even just regular releases so i'm kind of in that process right now and that's what you saw there but regardless i have a ton of great stuff here that I just received in the mail over the last few days to unbox and show you for this Giga Hall. Hey, real quick, it's me from the future. I'm here to tell you that you have to stick around for the entire video here. You're about to see a lot of prototypes and other cool oddities, but after that, it gets wild with stuff like, what even is this? Oh, you're gonna have to stick around to find out. This might be one of the most intense Giga Halls in the history of the series. So I'm just saying, don't go anywhere. And it's going to be a prototype heavy one. So if you're in the prototypes, it's going to be a fun time for you. And let's just start with a non-prototype though. That being the Planes character, Miguel. One of the rarest Planes characters ever released because he was an international exclusive in Canada. For whatever reason, Planes loved Canada. If they were going to be an international exclusive, it was going to be the Canada that applies to Miguel here. Koyla Ivanov and Little King, their first releases. Vanderbird and then Vesici was also one of them as well. The Elusive Five, as I like to call them, because they were the last wave of 2013 planes that never hit the United States of America or really anywhere else for that matter. Let's check out his bio here. Miguel, international flying superstars compete in the exciting Wings Around the Globe rally. Brazilian racer Miguel started out as an acrobatic flyer. Did not know that. He not only has racing moves, but endurance thanks to, look at that typo there, to a lifetime of sambaing the night away in his hometown, Rio, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Very cool. And was finally able to snipe one of these off of eBay. Very expensive for a planes character, but. I've been monitoring his price for a long time, and yeah, that's the going rate for him. I think there's a couple on eBay right now. Maybe there's one in the package, maybe there's one loose, but I've had him, of course, loose ever since he came out, and I wanted to get those really rare planes in the package as well, and he was the last one I needed, so very excited about that. Let's now move on to some of these boxes here. And right off the bat, yeah, we're getting into the prototypes already. This is one that was on eBay recently. You might have seen it until <laughs> I bought it. It's a XRS Speedy Comet prototype. Pretty identifiable here because of the colors, but the tires and the wheels aren't painted. These sidebars here are not the correct color. They're in like a orangish red. And he does have a code here, which is what really attracted me to this one the 239 there because there are some prototypes on eBay right now that are plentiful in terms of prototype standards like and that's great you know they're only like 30 bucks 30 40 50 dollars and those are really reasonable for prototypes but that being said there are quite a few of them out there in circulation whether it be the blue navy blue rusty or the white river sky with pink flares on him great great legitimate prototypes but there's just more of them out there and that's totally fine, but I'm trying to go for ones that are a little bit more elusive and this is one of them. And when they have codes, that also kind of heightens it for me. So yeah, really cool. And it's super weird to see just like the line going down the middle there, cutting off the blue from the orange. So really nice, nice prototype to add to the old collection. All right, let's see what else we got here. All right, I don't think this, yeah, this is not a prototype. But it's something that I've wanted for a long, long time. You guys might know what it is if you've been following my channel for a while. It's one of the Mini Racers Dino A Cruisers, but which one is it? It's number eight. Yep, that's eight in the lineup. Can you guys guess? It is the Wes Philanopus. 
the VW bus looking dinosaur. Now, I reviewed all of the Dino Egg Cruisers way, way back in November because I was fortunate enough to get them early. And yet, this was not part of that. For whatever reason, the seller did not have this one yet. And so I had to wait, just like everybody else, and get it normally. And so they're hitting Fred Meyer stores, they're hitting Smith stores, which is like a Kroger affiliate, both of those are. And even Target stores in the Easter section. I was actually able to find a lot of them at Target, but I did not find the three that are exclusive to this line, being the Spino Crank Shaft Directs, the Mecha Turbine Tops, and the West Philanopus. So expect a review of this soon. He's so cool that he will be one of the few mini racers on my channel to warrant his own solo review. What is this? Okay, this is also not a prototype. It is none other than a factory custom of Bruce Miller. So yeah, I've been trying to get this one for a while. I'm not sure if I told you guys, but I tried to order this a couple months ago and I got the normal Bruce Miller, the legitimate one. And a lot of people would be like, Mr. Dockett, I'd give up anything to get a normal Bruce Miller, especially when paying $10 and trying to get the factory custom bootlegged one. And yeah, I totally get that, and so I wasn't complaining either, but I still wanted the factory custom one, and you could see the differences there in the eyes a little bit, the coloring, and most notably the rims. So black instead of orange. There are a lot of factory customs like this in which, you know, there are a few tweaks around the eyes and the decals, but the wheels are a different color, and that's going to be your most notable difference. But it's actually kind of nice, though, that they have started making factory customs now of Bruce Miller. You know, they've done Brick Yardley, Buck Baringley, Reb Meeker, Todd Marcus, all sorts of other Cars 3 racers. And now they're doing Bruce. And I'm only saying that. I know it sounds weird. Like, oh, I'm so happy that they're counterfeiting Bruce Miller now. Hey, Bruce Miller is a super rare release that a lot of people are not willing to pay the money for. So why not there be a cheaper alternative out there? I'm all for that. Super all for that. And hey, if they do a Bobby Road Testa or a Lane Lock factory custom in the future, I'd be all for that too. So if you guys are looking for that, I'm pretty sure it's on eBay right now and also AliExpress. Now here are some more prototypes. I did show these. Well, I got other ones of these in a previous Giga Haul. It's actually kind of a funny story with this. You guys might discern a little bit about my character here when I tell you this story, but if you guys remember in the previous Giga Haul, I showed these and I said how I bought this Darla Vanderson prototype off eBay that had black rims and yet one of the ones I received actually had the silver rims, which was not how it was pictured. So I got a refund, got to keep it anyways, didn't have to send it back, all was good, but the seller blocked me. For whatever reason the seller was like screw this guy he's going to quibble about just the coloring of the wheels there i'm gonna block him and never have to deal with him again <laughs> and so i was like well i still want some and i also want to see if you're going to live up to your pictures because he didn't change the pictures or anything and well let's see did he send all black ones you know what i think he did so good on that seller he learned his lesson he paid closer attention to the ones that he was sending out because, hey man, if you're going to sell something on eBay, you best make sure that you send out what you have pictured. Whenever I sell on eBay, I am so, so careful about that because I know how I am and I expect everybody to be like me, even though they're not. Not everybody is as scrupulous as I am. It's a good standard to set. And so I try and live by that. And yeah, it looks like he did send three perfectly good Darla Vanderson prototypes. So good stuff. Happy about that. Awesome. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Wait a second. What happened here? The crown is broken. A couple of the little balls on the end of the crown there. Oh, and a side view mirror. Wow, this Darla has seen better days. <laughs> Hmm, do I quibble, guys? I'm not sure. I'll have to look to see if he listed it as new or used. I'm not sure. Who knows? <laughs> not too worried about it, though. Whatevs. 
All right. By the way, that's still on eBay, I believe. I don't think he's sold out. He's coming to a fortune of these Darla Vanderson prototypes. So if you want that, I'd be more than happy to message you the link if you contact me via Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, whatever it may be. Now, this box here, all these cars here that you see are from this box, which also has a ton more in it. Guys, let's see. Look at all that stuff in there. All these are prototypes that I got once again through my lovely friend that I always refer to in these videos. She helps me get these cars from Chinese contacts and all that stuff. And I couldn't be more thankful because without her, I would not be able to get any of this stuff. And it really, really enhances my collection. So thanks to her, you know who you are. You always watch my videos and I appreciate it. So we're gonna dive right on in here. Now, all these prototypes for the most part are engineering prototypes, meaning that they are pretty much complete, but they have a stamp on the hood here or somewhere else, one of these engraved coats. Now this one's quite a bit different from the release version because the metallic Cruz Ramirez that ended up getting released does not have this giant black outline around the windshield. So when I do like a prototype haul here soon and include these, I'll compare them. But yeah, here's 155 Metallic Cruz Ramirez from 2018. Made in China, no date stamp. Really cool. I, you know, there was a lot of these available, and <laughs> I was kind of selective about which ones I got because they're expensive. And that was one that there was no question in my mind that I needed to get because I went for ones that had quite a few differences from the ended up, you know, released finalized version. Now, APB here is also a little bit different in the sense that she has a little bit more of a glossy finish than the finalized version, which has a matte finish. 219 there, you can see that the white particularly is very glossy. Now there's, you know, it's funny, all the demolition derby cars that got prototypes, they're usually glossy, whereas the finalized versions are matte. You know, we saw that with T-Bone in my last prototype haul. If you guys remember that T-Bone was perfectly glossy. It wasn't even like close like this. I mean, you could kind of tell that this black is a little bit more matte than usual, but T-Bone was super glossy. And so that's an example of, you know, it's a good example of how the demolition derby cars were always kind of conceived as being glossy and then ultimately changed to a matte finish. And there's one in this haul that is going to illustrate that as well. Now here we have Pat Traxon. There's going to be two more Pat Traxons in this box. This one here has, well, we'll talk about it later, but keep that in mind. It's a dark logo there on the hood. And this guy is 211. You could feel that, by the way. It is engraved. It's not just a decal. You could feel that. Here's another one that is different from the finalized version, and it matches the stock image of Sterling. Can you guys spot it? Can you guys tell? It has this very slight black outline along the eyelid right there. That's not on the finalized version, but it is on the stock image, and so it's on this one here. It also seems to be a little bit of a darker gray. 255. Now, I always have people ask me, so does that mean that 255 of these things exist? I would argue yes but most of them, as in 95 to 98% of them, do not leak out. In fact, almost none of them do. I mean, we never see prototypes for some cars, right? So usually prototypes don't leak out into the hands of sellers. Sometimes they do, but most of them don't. You know, they get destroyed. All right, here we have Chris Rezstopsky without the flag, and this is the 2017 release. Yeah, a lot of these will be 2017 or 2018 releases. There are no Thailand prototypes in this box here today, I don't think. I don't remember the official one having a mouth plate like this. I'll have to check that when we do the review. But yeah, it's really cool, and this one's a super low number, 022. Moving right along here. Now here's a nice one, Phil Tankson, 168. Very cool. 
Love that. All right, let's dig in the box for some more. I love these boxes that they were shipped in, these clear acrylic cases, because I could use them for other things. All right, now here's an example that <laughs> does not illustrate what I was talking about. This high impact prototype here is already in a matte finish. And so that just translated right in over to the release version. And maybe that's because this is one of the later like released Demolition Derby racers because she was released in 2017 in a two pack, but then again in 2018 and that's a super rare release. She's honestly one of the rarest Demolition Derby racers ever alongside Fair Game. This guy, this one's 226 there and even has a black Sharpie mark there on the hood. So yeah, this was not what I was talking about. There's another Demolition Derby racer in this box that will highlight what I'm talking about, this like glossy versus matte finish type of deal. And there's quite a few of them in here, guys. So sit back, relax. This might not even be the end of the gig haul. Like this is the last box I have at the moment, but I'll probably, you know, wait and get some more things. So here's Brick Yardley, 219. I don't think there are any other differences between this prototype and the release version. But when we compare them, and I will compare them in a video soon, we'll make sure of that. You know what? I'm thinking right now that I might not do like a distinct prototype haul video, but rather do like a what are engineering prototypes type video because almost all these are engineering prototypes. There are some that we'll get to that aren't and that is tight. <laughs> oh, it's the other Pat tracks and nice. Let's see. There's two more. So I'm not sure which one this is. Okay. All right, cool. This is good. Yeah. So you can see this one is quite a bit different from the one that we just saw a way, way brighter. Piston Cup logo there on the hood. The Piston Cup itself and the red background is brighter. Everything else pretty much the same, but the code's now 312 and it moved over a little bit, so that's kind of interesting. Let's see about the rest of the decals. Yeah, all the decals do look to be a little bit brighter and it's super noticeable on the hood. Wait, what? That license plate reads, I'm fast. <laughs> it made me think of my fast. Is that the official license plate for Pat Traxon? I don't remember it being I'm fast. Oh, look, also here, official pace car. This prototype just said pace car. That's so cool. Yeah, I can't wait to compare these to the official versions because there's clearly a lot of differences that you wouldn't necessarily think of without seeing them side by side. All right, moving on. Gonna have a lot of napkins after this. Or maybe these are tissues. Should I blow my nose into these or would that be a little weird? These might be kind of gross. And it's Pat Traxon again. All right, so this is like the very, very last prototype stage before it gets released. It even has a date stamp there. However, it has this additional code down here, Poo 11. <laughs> That's so weird. Poo 11, P0011. You do not see that code on any other, like officially released cars or even other prototypes. And yet it's exactly how he looks, you know, in the finalized version. And you could tell that with the eyes specifically, you know. The black borders a little thinner, and then he has an additional black trim along the eyelid there as well. And again, we'll do a whole comparison in the future, but for now, I guess the license plate is I'm fast. I just don't remember Pat Traxon having that. You can also see that they added that like trunk emblem right there, which is not on either of the prototypes. Big Pat Traxon day. It's a good day to be Pat. <laughs> They've released Pat way too many times, though. All right. Who is this? Okay, this is probably my favorite one in the entire haul because I've never seen another one like it before. And that is this 
super heavy. Like this is way heavier than a typical McQueen, like twice the weight of a regular Lightning McQueen. And at first glance, you might think, oh yeah, that's the that's the Target exclusive from like 2013, 2014. Radiator Springs, Lightning McQueen, they released in that special acrylic case. Easy. Well, no. First of all, these are rubber tires, okay? This is an opening hood. And it's way heavier than that. The fact, oh my god, I just, oh, and it has a different mouth. <laughs> so on top of all those things, there's a different mouth. But there's inside the engine there. Wow, I've never seen anything like this before, guys. I'm not expecting you guys to come up with an answer, but let me know in the comment section below if you have any ideas as to what this could be. It's not a custom, not a custom, I'll tell you that right now. Is it a canceled Precision Series item? I can't really imagine them doing this version of McQueen in the Precision Series, but it certainly would fit the bill. It's got rubber tires, opening hood, weighted. Like, this is so heavy, guys. This is like almost a pound. I'd probably say this is 14 ounces, whereas this car, Chris Rivstovsky, for example, is just a couple ounces. This is a hefty car. The only thing that deters me from it being like a precision series, well, it could be a prototype, but they would have painted the teeth in there you know, instead of just sprayed it over with the metallic red. But yeah, this is so cool, guys. Probably my favorite item in this haul because I've just never seen anything like it before. So yeah, that's awesome. I'm going to put that off to the side here because I don't want the rubber tires to get full of the grain from my turf my terrain down here okay here it is guys here it is this is as you might have seen broadside and broadside is going to demonstrate what i was talking about before so here you go you can see that broadside is glossy look at how the light refracts off of it that is a glossy finish right there whereas the official version ended up being matte 480 is the code Wow. I've been trying to get one of these for a while. Like this one in particular. Like I've seen, I saw this one for sale a couple times actually. I think one of my contacts sent it to me and I was like, oh, hey, yeah, I'd love to buy that. And then they're like, oh, it's sold. Then I saw like an out of stock listing for it on eBay one time. So I was super grateful to finally have this one. Broadside's honestly an underrated character. So yeah. You can tell how glossy it is. And again, we'll compare this to the finalized version in a future video. Awesome. What's next? It's like the endless box. <laughs> okay, this one actually I think was free. Because I bought so much. They're like, dude, <laughs> you deserve this. And I have a lot of these actually. It's a prototype mini racer of the snowy Danico cruz ramirez you can see a couple codes now these ones are like stamped on they're not engraved m40 0213 m40 yep should match that down there so that's the 40th week of whatever year m was was that 2020 or something maybe i think so but yeah i do have in fact like 20 of these i probably should not say that out loud but i do so thanks for the gift person who sold me all these, but actually this was also a gift. So <laughs> the sellers, yeah, I love the seller. All right, here, what do we have next? Still some good stuff coming. Some next gens I know are coming. Oh, here we go. This is another one that I was super excited about. So you guys know I have a package prototype containing this exact car here. And that in and of itself is a miracle because they never did a metallic Dynaco Cruiser Mirrors or a gold Dynaco Cruiser Mirrors. This is all within the prototype realm here. And to have one loose now, it's like, oh, phew. Because every day I wake up and I want to open that package prototype just to get this out. No, I'm just kidding. I would never do that. Never, ever open a prototype. If you 
ever are so fortunate to come into contact with a package prototype, let that sink in. That's a prototype that made it as far as getting packaged. Never open it. Never. And so to have this now loose without having to open that is really cool. But yeah, you don't have any light year text on the tires. The rims, in fact, are a completely different color than we're used to for cruise. Silver instead of the metallic blue. Code up there, 160. The spoiler kind of takes away from it because it's just plain yellow and not metallic. But yeah, this is so awesome, guys. Oh my God. Gray base. Struggling to contain myself right now. Everything here is just beautiful. Gosh, I love this hobby. Brings so much joy to me. It's keeping me alive amidst the woes of the outside world. And yeah, here we go. We're going to start with some next gens. I think I have like two, maybe three next gens in this haul here. Again, this will be a great one for you guys to see up next to the official Ryan inside Laney because the coloring is super different. Like this is almost like a metallic Ryan. But yeah, the code is kind of hidden back here. You almost couldn't see it. 132. Yeah, it's so hard to see right there. But yeah, really cool. And, you know, all these prototypes are from, like, the same two-year span, like 2017 to 2018, right? And it's making me a little sad because, you know, obviously cars were made in China for, like, two decades, right? Almost two decades or... No, 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 no. <laughs> they were made for, like, 12 years there, okay? Not anymore, though. So how are we going to get more prototypes if they're not coming from China anymore. Like, do we ever see many Thailand prototypes for sale? I mean, certainly I've gotten a few, but I'm just afraid that I'm not going to be able to get some of these cooler cars in the future because simply they're not made in China anymore. And that's where everybody's just super active about getting cars, right? And spinning them off to Americans or whoever wants them. This is an XRS. George Newen Mud Racer, and pretty easy to see here, 181 right there. He also looks to be a brighter yellow. The base is also a little loose here. You can see how the wheels are sputtering around a little bit. Good stuff, good stuff. I guess that counts as like another next gen. Cruise could as well. Who is this? Oh, okay. This is funny because it's like the only non-Cars 3 character in this mix. But yeah, it goes to show that some of these are from 2018, like Giuseppe Motorossi here. Now, the 2018 Giuseppe Motorossi was only released in Europe. Yep, that's correct. Another international exclusive on the day. And this one's different from the previous Giuseppe's because of the thick, like, gray outline around the windshield there. And this is a huge stamp right there 165 huge like that's way bigger like think about it you can't even see the one on ryan but yeah this guy's like he thinks out he sticks out like a sore thumb because there are no other cars like non-cars three characters in here it's so wild all right moving right along here some of these are so stuck in their bubble wrap containment this one i'm pretty excited about cal weathers can't have brick yardley without cal i guess kind of need bobby swift now too oh shoot two 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 now this is the like early obviously since it's a prototype it says hank will williams i was gonna say hank williams hank weathers and i say obviously because there were some Hank Weathers, Cal Weathers that were actually sold and made it to retail before they stopped and switched it over to Cal Weathers. So it's, you know, pretty self-explanatory, pretty evident that it was going to be Hank on the prototypes here. Now it's funny, these two like were presented to me at the same time and I was like, wow, that's a lot of twos. <laughs> two, 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 zero, two, two. 
All right, man, how much left? Okay, we got two more, guys. Two more. I know what one of them. Actually, I think Ed Trunken, and there's a Lightning McQueen here. That is not. You know what? We're going to save that one for last. This should be Ed Trunken here. Man, I'm going to have a mess to clean up after this. <laughs> Eddie boy! Let's go. Now, I sent this to one of my friends before I bought it. I was like, if you can spot the code on here, I will be so impressed with you. And she did it. Like, immediately, she knew exactly where the code was. And it's up here. I don't know why they hide them on the next gens like this. Like, I'm not even going to be able to show you guys. Okay, there you go. 213. Oh, it's super easy to see right there. But they hide them on, like, the back fender for these next gens for whatever reason. But really nice. I got this one because Ed Trunken is probably, like, a top 12 favorite next gen of mine. And, yeah, one of the later 2017 releases. So, again, just kind of showing the span of when all these prototypes were getting pumped out, you know, earliest, like, May 2017 to the latest of late 2018 with Giuseppe Motorisi. Now this one is not an engineering prototype, it's just a straight up prototype. And again, <laughs> using my friends to help me out because you guys think I know everything, but truly I don't. I was like, what McQueen is this guys? And somebody immediately said, oh yeah, that's like the McQueen, uh, the tireless McQueen from the Mater 2 pack. I was like, wait, what are you talking about? And then he showed me, I was like, oh yes, yes, the Lightning McQueen made her with no tires from 2016. Now, it was throwing me off because, well, he has tires here, but this is undeniably the expression of Lightning McQueen with no tires. And again, we'll compare him eventually to the real deal here. Or maybe I'll do a prototype prestige on him, that'd actually be kind of cool. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this part of the Giga Haul. I'll probably wait. Honestly, I shouldn't say that because I'll probably wait and let a few more things come in because I know it's only, well, it's about half an hour and that's kind of long, but I want to spruce it up with more than just prototypes. I always need kind of like a larger item to put in the back of the thumbnail. So yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed the little prototype part, kind of like the big prototype part, and I'll see you guys in a couple seconds. Hey, hey, hey. We are back with the second segment of Giga Hall Part 16. After that massive prototype barrage, I don't think there's a single prototype in any of what you're about to see. And now I've been holding a lot of these boxes, just waiting for the right time to record, waiting to accumulate enough stuff. So I am so excited. Like the pent up anticipation is off the charts right now. And it looks like we're gonna start off with this loose car here, and I think a lot of this stuff will be loose and not packaged. And a lot of it is going to be straight out of the box. I received it in. All right, so you guys actually might recognize this from the last Giga Haul because that actually sparked a whole nother little side quest for me. But yeah, remember I got this Pinstripe McQueen in the last Giga Haul, but it was in horrible condition. It's from one of the Disney Parks Mac releases from like before 2010. And they had like their own little line of diecast cars. They're a little smaller than the Mattel stuff, but they did some exclusive paint jobs. Now I know the Disney store also did this Pinstripe McQueen, but the Max set has that Hot Rod Mater that you saw in the last Giga Haul. So I just kind of wanted to upgrade, get a better condition one of these. I know it has a chip up there, but overall it's in phenomenal condition and it was very inexpensive. So happy to add that to the old collection. It's kind of funny, like when I got that in the last Giga Haul, I immediately then saw this one on eBay, which is super rare because I never find these on eBay like at all. They included a little thank you note, but they didn't write the business on there, so can't give them a shout, unfortunately. All right, let's move on to this tiny box here. Now there's gonna be a lot of Get Me collectible stuff in these boxes. I want to show you guys that when I tell you guys to check out his eBay store, that's always linked in the description below, I'm not messing around because I truly order from him like all the time. And this Giga Haul is going to really prove that. Now, I have no idea really what this Ramon is. I am so confused. I've never seen a base like this. It's like part of it was painted in that silver white. 
on top of the black. Yeah, that's definitely what happened there. I've never seen this expression on a Ramon before, like the hydraulic purple Ramon that they did back in 2011 does not have this expression nor this color tone. It's a much darker purple. So I have no idea what this is. Don't think it's a factory custom because they don't usually like paint the base like this. So yeah, it's just an interesting piece. Something that I've never seen before. And yeah, I'm gonna have to do some more research on this. Or if you guys have any ideas, let me know in the comments what this could be. The base is really what's throwing me off. Like if it didn't have the paint on it, I think it might be an FC as in a factory custom, but yeah, I don't know. All right, next up we have, oh, look at that lights and sounds, Miles Axrod. So he had this for a really good deal. It's not in mint condition by any stretch of the imagination, but I wanted this just for show. I don't even care about the lights and sounds because this Miles, you know, it's 155 scale die cast and it has like a unique expression. That's really what was so great about the 155 scale lights and sounds line. Everything was the same size except for like Professor Z or something and they had unique expressions and sometimes they released stuff that the other line didn't like Spy Mater and Spy Fimic Missile. So yeah, looks like the lights still work but the sound does not. <laughs> And that is totally okay with me. Good stuff. Let's see. I don't think there's anything else in this box. Oh, there is. One more item in this box. What is this? Oh. Now I know what it is. It is a prototype. So I guess there is one prototype in here. But Give Me Collectibles doesn't usually sell prototypes. Can you guys spot why it's a prototype? What makes it a prototype? Can you guys spot it? Well, there is no date stamp on the bottom, but it has an unfinished roof rack up here. You can see that it's gray instead of the brown that it should be. There are quite a few of these out in circulation and to the point where a lot of people have sold them without even knowing that it's a prototype. Like, give me collectibles, you didn't even know. <laughs> but yeah, this was still an expensive car. It was even more than those other two combined. Actually, all three of the ones I have already shown you combined because Jay Schuster has just become so rare as a character. So yeah, that was really nice to get. Let's get into this bigger box. So yeah, more Get Me Collectibles stuff here. But all of this stuff now should be from the Disney store. And I am so excited for all of this because I really wanted to expand my Disney store collection and this definitely was the best way to do it. So here we have a super rare Hawaiian Lightning McQueen. Now they've done like obviously all those artist series and for every artist series that they did, you know, whether it be like the Jay Ward one or the John Lasseter one, which is where this came from. And I think even maybe like the shoe steer guy had one as well, but there would be like a large 124, 118 scale McQueen that had a different paint job. So there was that. Those are always super expensive. Then they did a four pack that featured a McQueen from each series or four of the series in the usual scale. I think that was a D23 exclusive at one point and this is one of them from that set. Very rare and oh my gosh, just such a great McQueen. He's got a surfboard of course here as well that even has his name on it and John Lasseter's signature. But yeah, this is different from the typical one that came in the like normal case line. Wow, look at that surfboard jiggle. It doesn't really latch on to anything, I don't think. Yeah, I wonder how this was attached in the past or if it was always just loose. But yeah, that's really cool. I love the rims as well. It just looks so classy, like he deserves to be out in California or somewhere like that. Now here's a Disney Store item that I've been trying to get for a long, long time. I just love how the Disney Store version of this character looks, even though obviously Mattel has done Kabuto so many times. It's not like this is an instance where, oh, I'm buying it because nobody else did it. I am literally buying it because I think the Disney Store absolutely nailed this character better than Mattel. And that's mainly because they got the tire of the, the color tire correct 
and being red there and it just looks so great. The expression is really good. Probably one of the best Disney store expressions ever. You got the stack spoiler back there. You have his little crown here. The N2O canisters back there, which on the Mattel version, they just paint over in gray. It looks almost Zamac. Oh, this is just such a beautiful car. And yeah, the tires are the main thing as to why I like it so much. But yeah, ha, oh, so great to finally have this one in the old collection. Now, I'm not sure if you guys know this, but this summer I'll be doing an updated collection video and I never really showed like my entirety. I don't know why, but I didn't show all of my Disney store items in the last collection update, which was volume one and two. So this one will show all of it no matter what. And I was like, hey, if I'm gonna show it, it's glory and all that, might as well expand on the collection as well. And here's one that is, oh my gosh, this is probably one of the rarest Disney store releases of all time, especially in perfect condition like this one is here. The Ferrari, Michael Schumacher F430 Ferrari. Oh my gosh. So grateful to have this. I love how you could see the engine on the through the window there. But yeah, I think this was only released in England in a two pack or something like that. But just a super rare release that you really just can't find even if you had all the money in the world these days. It's just not available. So yeah, very excited about that one. And here we have another one that's in the same boat released in a UK European two pack and has since become basically extinct. You can't find it anywhere else. It is their version, their take on Hotshot, Holiday Hotshot Lightning McQueen kind of crossbred with the snowplow Lightning McQueen because he has the lights and the light bar up top, but he doesn't have the like really off-road tires or the plow. But I love how they did the snow detailing here, just kind of like a light dusting on him. Looks really good, and they did even on the bar up top and the tires, which are treaded. Another great release from the Disney Store. It's so funny. The Disney Store puts out, or they did, a lot of stuff that just isn't good in my opinion. Like the eyes just look super weird. And even this, like the, <laughs> who has a mouth like that? It's like a pencil streak mouth. It's so thin and long. <laughs> but yeah, it's funny that they put out so much crap in my opinion. And I hate to say that, but just, I don't know. I just don't think a lot of the stuff is great quality. And yet the stuff that is elite like this or the Ferrari or this McQueen over here, it's just so elusive, you know, it's so rare and not even sometimes available to the general public. And so I don't know how I feel about that business model, <laughs> but that is kind of how they ran things. And even to this day, they have some cars on the road, die cast of Ivy and Mater McQueen, and yet they're only available on the Asian Disney Store website. Why? I have no idea. When will they come to the US website? Who knows? Disney Store doesn't even know I tweeted at them and asked, and they gave me a bogus reply. Anyway, this was the other car in that two pack along with McQueen there, and it's their take on Reindeer Mater. So again, a little bit different because he doesn't have the like full on off-road tires and the suspension and all that like the Mattel version does, but he does have the cute and adorable reindeer hat up here that's also dusted in snow. Just looks so good. I, I don't like really any of the Maters from the Disney store, especially the regular ones. Now, obviously bought a lot because there are things that Mattel nor Tomica did, but I'm not a huge fan of how they like work the mouth and especially the eyes on the Mater. And I think sometimes they just look really just kind of one dimensional in terms of the brown rust. Like I think Mattel does a way better job depicting rusty Mater, but this is a great release for sure. I love the treaded tires again and the snow detailing throughout the entirety of it, which kind of covers up for the one dimensional rust that they have going on here. I mean, <laughs> you look at this car you look at any Disney store mater and you don't, you couldn't tell you, no one could tell you that he's a rusty car because he's just one shade of brown. You know what I mean? So that's my major complaint with mater from the Disney store, but the snow helps with this. 
and it looks really good. Another, obviously, because he was included in that two-pack super rare Disney Store item. Here we have the last one from Get Me Collectibles, Todd Marcus, the No Star Racer. Just like the look of this guy. This one isn't rare or anything. There's no wild story about him, but I like the look of him. And I have a couple other Piston Cup racers from the Disney Store, so I figured why not add him to the collection here. There are a couple Disney Store items I'm still after, namely the... I want Bling Bling Lightning McQueen, but that one shouldn't be hard to get. Like, that one isn't rare. But one that is kind of rare, I guess you could say, is the Blue Lieutenant Lightning McQueen. That's right, like the McQueen from Mather Private Eye, but in blue. I know, it's super weird. But it came in a five-pack with a bunch of stuff I already had, so I never got it when it came out. And the only ones on eBay right now, I mean, I think there is one full pack for like a reasonable price I'll probably end up getting, but I would like to get loose ones like all these. And the only loose ones are in just horrible condition, you know? So that's kind of what happens with the Disney store stuff. They, for whatever reason, get way more beat up, it seems, than Mattel stuff. But anyways, <laughs> moving on to the next item here, we have Spider Machine GP7. Now, this is one of the Hot Wheels premium line releases. I only found this one time in the store, and I remember that the blister like literally was falling off of the card. So I didn't buy it, but never found it again. So I just had to snag one off of eBay, and it's not like it was rare or anything, so it was a pretty reasonable buy. I have no idea what this is, though. Like, why is it in Japanese, or I think that's Japanese. Why does this exist? Where is this from? Is this from a comic? I have no idea. So <laughs> I only bought it because I buy all of the Marvel Hot Wheels stuff, no matter what it is. And yeah, it looks really cool, but I have no idea what the hell it is. <laughs> if anyone wants to shed some light on that, let me know. It has to be from some comic book, I guess. All right, here we have the Mini Racers Variety 15 pack with exclusive carbon shoe to the Roki. I got this on Mercari for less than retail price. So I'm not entirely sure how that happened because I don't believe these have gone on sale yet anywhere. But yeah, I don't know why there are Sharpie markings on it either. Prototype. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Definitely not a prototype. But yeah, I mean, I figured if I'm going to be able to get this for less than retail price, might as well snag it. Yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. Good stuff. Yeah, might sell that to a friend of mine, in fact. And then this might be the last item, I think. Got a package Disney Store item for once. I'll probably leave this package. Another really nice set that I don't know why I didn't get when it originally came out. It's a set of metallic rocket racers. Now, I know you look at Paul Conner up there and he doesn't really look metallic, but I think that's just because he's white. And so it comes across more as like a pearl than anything and it's hard to really depict metallic white unless you do like silver but McQueen looks awesome look at that not a huge fan of the expression but it just looks so cool I'm a huge fan these are pullbacks by the way they're in the era of when Disney Store switched to doing pull pack items instead of just the regular <laughs> I don't know why they had to implement that yeah cam spinner over there looks really good as well in the dark metallic blue again not a fan of his eyes like there's a lot of colors going on there you have the light blue the white the metallic blue the gray so just a little bit too much for me but still looks really good yeah and i only got this for like a little bit above that 20 dollars retail price there on ebay i think the seller had like six of them available so he clearly stocked up on them and I don't know, if you guys want this, feel free to shoot me a message and I could send you the link to it on eBay. I think that is all, guys. Now, I believe, I'm not sure who sent me this, but in one of these packages, there was this <laughs> sheet of Playful Penguin stickers. And I have to say, thank you. This is a huge score right here. I can't wait to slap a penguin on just about every leather or piece of paper that I have to give to somebody, they're going to get a cute little penguin alongside my name. I'm going to sign it, Mr. Docket, Playful Penguin. All right, guys, that is all for 
Giga Hall Part 16. Let me know in the comment section below what is your favorite item that I got. I know that's kind of conceited, honestly. So how about you answer instead? Have you gotten anything in the stores or online recently? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what you guys have been buying. And yeah, guys, I'll see you next time for Giga Hall Part 16. Probably gonna space these out a little bit more than I have been lately. Wait, wait, there's another box. Oh my God, guys, there's another box here. I completely missed it. Ah, oh, there's so many bags in here. I have no idea what this is. Oh my God, it's from Jim Scavenger, guys. I can't believe I almost missed this. All right, yeah, so these are brand new customs from Mr. Scavenger that I will be reviewing on my channel. By the time you see this, I don't think I will have released the review on these guys yet, so I think we're in the clear. But yeah, you have Next Gen Taco Mint Pity here. Just, I love the metallic brown, just looks so good. Obviously, not only did Taco Mint not appear in Cars 3, but they didn't even do a NASCAR release of him. So this is like, super expanded universe because the NASCAR line is expanded universe as it is, but still had to have this because Taco Mint's like my favorite sponsor. And here is the crew chief. I think he's going to be doing more of these as well with some of the other like Thomas Hatfield next gens that I've reviewed on my channel. But yeah, all right, there we go. Now I think I have everything. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys again soon for another video. Bye now.